folks, welcome to the broadcast. And yes, they may very well be building Dick Cheney's wheelchair right now in a deep in an underground bunker. It just makes logical sense that the next step of Dick Cheney is he's floating around in the air with his hydrogen drive and life extension and his all-powerful wheelchair overseeing the battlefield of all the In any case, we're not here for Dick Cheney tonight, and I'm a little under the weather, so you may not go for 30 minutes, but I do want to revisit the FOIA Freedom of Information document. The Freedom of Information documents are of critical importance in our day and age. You know, Obama promised transparency, and they all do. Not to pick on Obama, you will be no different. But they promise transparency, and they become the most secretive administration we've ever seen or known. So it's critical that we have transparency, and that's what freedom of information is all about. And, and when you apply and you sue for documents and that you have to pay for them, they're not free, of course, and you have to wait for them to come in. But as was with the case with Fukushima, there were people filing early on, and these are, you know, some of them were mainstream outlets, but again, it shows that people know that when these incidences happen, the first thing you do is file for freedom of information. And this is old school stuff. I mean, I'm coming in new to the scene. I haven't even had my laptop, what, year or something, maybe about a year or something. So I haven't been on Facebook very long, I haven't been on YouTube very long, so I'm getting broken into all this and getting at a lesson here. Meanwhile, the number one alternative uh, news outlet, and that would be InfoWars Prison, they didn't file for freedom of information, not to my knowledge. If they did, they certainly haven't spoken much about it. And that's part of my contention is that the alternative media, some of the biggest outlets, pretty much all of them as far as I know, they didn't highlight, showcase, and pray this information around. And, they, and when they did speak of it, it was like in hushed tones and in small print and barely even touched upon the subject. So my contention is when you understand the scope and size of the cover-up, when you understand the fatalities involved, and you understand this isn't the first time this has happened, I mean, it really begins to come out, and you and you really get the full scope and size. And it's it's pretty maddening to some extent to know this has happened, and there's absolutely you know almost no movement in the direction of justice in this matter. And and that's what we got to do is bring it to attention of everybody we know, and, and get them involved and start spreading the word. So. Let's go right to the Freedom of Information document I've chosen tonight, which I have a link on the YouTube uh, video that I post up early today. And I'm going to start, uh, let's see, I'm on the wrong page here. I want to go look at some talking points. So if you go to page 15, this is a 413-page document. And that's how I refer to them because, like I say, they didn't make it easy for us to go through them. They it was a blizzard effect where they released a whole bunch at once. They weren't in any chronological order. There's heavy redaction, lots of duplicated stuff. So they did their best to obfuscate our research into the matter. But nevertheless, we have investigated and we have some information. So I'm on page 15. Let me back up one more page. And these are talking points, what we're looking at right now. And many of you will be familiar with talking points. They're not spoken of in, an, in a term of admiration because we know what talking points are all about, avoiding answering the question. Politicians are honed and polished in the art of talking points. In fact, Hillary Clinton, I will give her credit. I watched her be interviewed by a uh, lady from Pakistan, and, and the, she was asking her questions about drones. And during the course of the 15, 10, 15-minute answers, a long answer, she never even touched upon that question in any way, shape, or form. So she just used talking points and, and just danced around the issue, and they're very good at that. So talking points, we're through with that. We're tired of that. We want the information, and we want it now. We're American citizens. We pay our taxes. We stay out of trouble, and this is unacceptable. So let's have a look. We're on page 15, and what we want to look at here is talking point number three. Quote, what should people in Alaska, Hawaii, and the West Coast do to protect themselves from fallout? And they classify the public answer and the, quote, additional technical non-public information. But we do not get to hear. And the worse it is, the less chance of us hearing it. I'll put it that way. Public answer. The available evidence shows the United States can be expected to avoid any impacts from radioactive materials. So no public action is necessary. We believe there is very low risk to the U.S. considering the long distance from the U.S. and the type of event. 
The NRC continues to analyze the available information, and existing monitoring equipment can detect any materials before they could present a hazard. Now, additional technical non-public information. NRC is working with the DHS, EPA, and other federal partners to ensure monitoring equipment is properly positioned based on meteorological and other relevant information. So while in one answer they say, nothing to worry about, it's no big deal, it's long distance, and the other answer amongst themselves is say, yeah, we're putting out testing equipment, we want to know what's coming over. And when you become familiar with the documents, you know that early on they were looking at Three Mile and Chernobyl and modeling the Merak and everything over these uh, previous incidences. So there's plenty of evidence in the documents to show that this is total bogus answer to the public. They know darn well it's going to travel across that Pacific jet stream current. And they know we're going to get hit. They talk about the testing from Chernobyl, what they found over here. So they, they know darn well. It's the third time this has happened. So my main you know, contention with the alternative media is because they didn't jump on it. It's not just ruining Obama's election chances. I mean, that would be nice and everything. And it would be nice to get a Green Party candidate in there that's against nuclear power. But we need to hold the alternative media accountable. They're not acting like an alternative media if we're not pushing these issues forward and highlighting them, showcasing them, and writing the articles like I do that ties in the whole big picture. So you see here they know ahead of time everything that's going to happen, but we're told a different story. It's a two total different realities. Page 17, let's look at number 7. What happens when slash if a plant melts down? Public answer. In short, nuclear power plants in the United States are designed to be safe. To prevent the release of radioactive material, there are multiple, multiple barriers between the radioactive material and the environment, including the fuel cladding. That's the zirconium cladding of the fuel rods. The heavy steel reactor vessel itself and the containment building, usually a heavily reinforced structure of concrete and steel several feet thick. Additional technical non-public information. The melted core may melt through the bottom of the vessel and flow onto the concrete containment floor. The core may melt through the containment liner and release radioactive material into the environment. This is one in my notes I marked down early on because it struck me as just such a radical difference between the two answers where one's telling you not to worry, there's total containment protection and, and you know, no big deal, and the other one's giving you, you know, even closer to what's a realistic story. It's still not giving you the whole story about if it went down into the seawater, whatever. I've, there's plenty of horror stories about the China syndrome, if we want to get into that. But it's more a step in the right direction of, hey, being honest, when it melts down and the containment is ruptured or it breaches con containment, the reality is the plume is, it's all, plumes are always carried in there. In fact, NARAC models plumes all the time for all sort of industrial incidences. So they, they know the, the dynamics and the physics of plumes, I'll put it that way. Okay, now we want to advance to page 85. Bear with me as I forward in my computer. Page 85, and we're going to be looking at a number of, these are talking points again here pretty much, and we're looking at number six. And this, I wanted to point this out because the question is, what other U.S. agencies are involved and what are they doing? Well, like I say, this is a grandiose, vast conspiracy. To pull this off and hide the radioactive plume and fallout from Americans, you have to have a massive net of snare of information, and that's just a plain fact. If you doubt that this information didn't get out, just ask your friends. I mean, on Facebook, most of my friends on Facebook are people that are in the realm of alternative media. They're posting stuff from these sites all the time. Well, I post my stuff, and I talk to them, and they still don't get it. They're still not getting it. Why? Because I am alone, the guy posting up the articles. They're not getting it from the alternative outlets. Right? They're not being pounded from these alternatives. They say, hey, look, 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 pay attention, pay attention. So one guy alone can shout from the top of his roof for as long as he wants and grow hoarse, and no one will ever hear him. Hopefully this picks up a little bit of steam, and it begins to play into the alternative media, and we force them to act like what they're supposed to be. Right now it's a few people in the independent media that really understand this. And uh, Chris Busby, I think, is the physicist who's really... I mean, when you look at the academia that is speaking out on this, it's few and far between. The only ones being honest, like Chris Busby, you can only see his videos when he's being interviewed in Europe or Thailand or some far, far away place, you know, and that's the level of control. The best we get is Arnie Gunderson. And my mom early on pointed out that he's a shill. I said, how's Arnie a shill? I said, well, he, he's still for nuclear power. And he'll, he'll briefly mention the 40 documents, but he's not going to read you the thyroid doses to children in California. 
He's not going to read to you, no, no, we're not going to tell them this is not for public release. He's not going to give you that. He's not going to tell you they know all about Chernobyl and all this. He's not going to give you the low-down dirty that's contained in these documents. So, again, it's damage mitigation. It's gatekeeping. They let a little bit out. You know, prison planet had to do something. That's a fact because the articles I wrote plainly point an accusing finger right at. So it's been months and months and months and months. I've sent them all the information. I haunted his YouTube. I was a jerk about it. I really was because I said to myself all the time, it's not made right. Something is not right. This story is huge. It is a monster. It's, you know, Watergate times 10. You know, Ollie Norris and Iran-Contra times 10. I mean, it's only the death toll of 40,000 and predicted to go over a million by, what, 2031, and I'm going to read these numbers to you in a minute. I'm getting fired up here because this is it's, it's unacceptable in this country anymore. People are going to need to, you've been on your couch nice and comfortable watching football, drinking beer, playing games, but now the time you're going to have to stop painting your belly for the football game and get your butt involved and become an investigative journalist and start speaking the truth. That's all I can say. Now let's go to number 10 here. Is there a danger of radiation making it to the United States? In response to nuclear emergencies, the NRC works. Wait a minute. Did I actually cover that last one or did I get distracted there? Uh, the other agencies. Okay, let me go back. I got distracted. Exactly. Number six. These other agents, I want to point out here, to, to, to be clear, that there's multiple agencies involved. The NRC is closely coordinating its efforts with the White House, DOE, DOD, USAID, and others. The U.S. government is providing whatever support requested by the Japanese government. So in the beginning, it says the entire federal family is responding to the event. And that term, federal family, which is a worrisome term for me, because that's referring to them, okay, the, the government, the powers, the alphabet agents. They are the federal family. And if you want to think about it a little bit, doesn't it sound like we're not part of that family? It's a whole other family on and off to itself. We're the herd. We're the sheeple. And they are the federal family that's overseeing the sheep. And that's it's mentioned throughout the documents. And that, boy, that's the feeling I sure get from it. It's like we don't even have a say or participation in this government at all. And they know it. They know it. Okay, is there a danger of radiation making it to the United States? In response to nuclear emergencies, the NRC works with other U.S. agencies to monitor radioactive releases and predict their path. The NRC continues to monitor information regarding wind patterns near the Japanese nuclear power plants. Nevertheless, given the thousands of miles between the two countries, Hawaii, Alaska, and the U.S. territories and the U.S. West Coast are not expected to experience any harmful levels of radioactivity. Well, pardon my French, but that's bullshit. And they knew this right from the beginning when you clearly read through the Freedom of Information documents. There are public documents available on the NRC website. I have links to all of them in my articles. And I have a friend, Donna, who is now beginning to go through these, and she understands the you know, the massive amount there is to go through, but also understand some of these critical statements, these damning uh, statements made within that prove everything I've been saying all along. It's a huge cover-up. There's 40,000 deaths. Not all could have been prevented. I, I give them that. But it's about government doing its role, its duty to protect U.S. citizens. And if FEMA and DHS are embedded and intimately involved, if they're reporting to the White House, but we don't hear anything about it, and we don't even hardly hear about it in the alternative media, Folks, I'm telling you, we are in a bad spot right now, and it's not going to get better until we either replace elements of the alternative media or they start doing their job. And I suggest to you this. You know, the election is almost here. Undoubtedly, these same outlets that I've been questioning and I've cast doubt upon, they're going to want to start to talk more about the FOIA documents. Once Obama's reelected, no big deal. It can slip out. And if you look at 9-11, if enough time goes by, do you really expect people to be held accountable? Do you really expect people to go to jail? Or if years and years go by, can we pretty much say that no one's going to go to jail for 9-11? No one is. No one's going to go to jail for the federal building bombing. No one is. So the fact is we have to address these situations. The time is of the utmost importance is what I'm trying to say. We were failed by Prison Planet. We were failed by InfoWars and a number of other outlets as well. And these are the ones that claim to be the largest, the most important, blah, blah, blah. But you see what I'm saying when this conspiracy is a lot provable Holder has been issuing fast and furious is nothing. Again, I'm going to keep harping on that because this is fast and furious times 100. Times, that's my opinion, but, you know, I've been watching politics and reading books and paying attention, and I'm an intelligent, capable, coherent individual, so that is my analysis at the present time. Now we have one more to look at here. Let's look at number 12. This will be on 
page 85. Has the government set up radiation monitoring stations to track the release? The NRC understands that EPA is utilizing its existing nationwide radiation monitoring system, RADNET, to monitor continuously the nation's air and it regularly monitors drinking water, milk, and precipitation for environmental radiation. EPA has publicly stated its agreement with the NRC's assessment that we do not expect to see radiation at harmful levels reaching the U.S. from damaged Japanese nuclear power plants. Nevertheless, EPA has stated that it plans to work with its partners to deploy additional monitoring capabilities to parts of the western U.S. and U.S. territories. Now I'm going to click to a screen I've got open from Alexander Higgins' blog, and I'm going to read the title to this article. And I still have a decent opinion of Alexander Higgins, and I like his website, and when it comes to radiation, but it's an informable any news, and Alexander Higgins, those are the three places to go. And Higgins posts things that nobody else will. Same with E&E News and same with Informable. Those, that little trio there is pretty much alone in and of itself. Now, I didn't see Higgins go into the details with the FOIA doc. I did tell from the script one, two, and three, but he did not mirror and carry any of those either. And those are where I really pulled from the documents and really gave the whole larger picture, you know. Now, let's look at the title of this. It's called Confirmed, EPA Rigged Radnet Japan nuclear radiation monitoring equipment to report lower levels of Fukushima fallout. So we have evidence of while they say, oh yeah, and we test too. It's not going to get here. It's too far away, but we're going to test just in case. And then we find out that they they rigged, they recalibrated the monitors. What happened was they recalibrated where the level dropped so low, it dropped below just the baseline level before the accident. So all of a sudden, people said, hey, what's going on? All of a sudden, now we're even lower than the background radiation we had before the accident. So they're, you know, they're not always competent. Sometimes they have slip-ups and we catch them in it. So while they say we're testing and doing all these wonderful things to make sure you're safe, really the situation with the RADnet, and it goes in an article, I suggest you go to his website and look into this one. The lady that was overseeing that was a George Bush only friend, and if you read about it, the operation's just a sham. None of them work. Half of them are shut down. You know, that's... It's unacceptable. Where's our money going? Where's our tax money going? What is it paying for that we don't have safety measures? You know, the rubric of national security is played out every day, all day, to hide anything from us, right? But where's the national security when it came to Plumgate? Where's the national security? Again, on Obama's administration, Romney won't talk about it. Alternative media is 99% quiet. When they do talk about it, it's talking about the disaster or they're talking about some side issue, but they will not spell out the larger picture. And again, I challenge anyone to show me a document, show me an article. If you, First of all, you'll have to read my Tales from the Script 1, 2, and 3. Once you've read those, I challenge you to find another article that shows the big picture like I do and points a finger towards our fascist government and this regime which has caused this to us, okay? And I haven't found that yet, and I'm still waiting for someone to show me, but any person, anyone at all, to write in the big picture. Now, let's go to page 103. I get pretty fired up over this because children are most affected as their cells are dividing at a higher rate. They are absolutely innocent, folks. There's, there's no, you cannot tell me any child that was affected by the radiation deserved it. Period. Period. Maybe some congressmen did, but no, no, none of the children. I can guarantee you that. Now, on page 103, we're looking at a letter from Congressman Blumenauer, and this once again shows that the obvious common sense logic that, you know, if, if from China we get pollution that floats across, and we know this, California's dealt with it, Oregon's dealt with it, Washington's, the West Coast has dealt with China pollution for many, many years. Do you think maybe if there's a meltdown in Japan, it would take the Pacific jet stream and come over here? So it's pretty obvious. And here's, here's uh, Congressman Earl Blumenauer's letter to Jack Sco and uh, Lisa Jackson of the EPA. Dear Administrator Jackson and Chairman Jacksco, I write to inquire about the potential risks to U.S. West Coast communities from the explosions and release of radiation from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear facility in Japan. In a region that is already breathing air pollution from China, my constituents are concerned about radiation contamination from the facility reaching the West Coast. Common sense there. While a number of experts have indicated that contamination in the U.S. as a result of the Japanese catastrophe is unlikely, I would like to better understand the agency's contingency plans and your plan for disseminating information to concerned citizens. At your earliest convenience, please respond to me with the following information. 
What is the U.S. government doing to monitor radiation levels over the Pacific? What steps is the government taking to plan for a scenario in which radiation is elevated to unsafe levels? How does the government plan to provide information about this potential risk to citizens? Thank you for your attention to this request, so on and so forth. So you can see Congressman Blumenauer is asking the right questions, and this is what anyone with common sense should be asking at the time. Did he get the answers? Probably not. Probably not, because some congressmen are compartmentalized. Some don't, may not even know the dangers of nuclear radiation. I was absolutely oblivious and ignorant to this whole situation up until, what, February 27th, that month of February in 2012, when uh, my mom came to me with the informable uh, article, and I read Hickson and, and Thompson's well-written articles, and my hat's off to both of them, excellent writers, and, and really that's where I got my heads up from. So I compiled what they had written, and then let look into the documents. But first I just took an overview of, of both of their editorials they had written, and it kind of compiled that and still gave a big picture, too, and said, hey, what's going on here? You know, And at that time, like I say, I, had a, I was naive, and my bubble was popped right there. And it was popped later, and I found out that, Jones and crew in the InfoWars, I was a big subscriber and a big fan and follower, and that's who woke me up. My uncle was on the, my uncle's a Navy pilot that was interviewed on Jones about the jets in 9-11. Could you make that spiral turn to hit the Pentagon? And my uncle says, definitely not. He's an old school Navy pilot. So I know Jones does interview people who are legit from time to time, but I've seen him steer the conversation with Greg Palace when it comes to nuclear power, and it's very sublime. You must understand within the alternative media, the infiltration, the manipulation must be much more sublime because we're dealing with another classification, sociologically speaking, of people who are already questioning and they're doubting and they know government's not being honest. They know the mainstream media has been corrupted and co-opted. And so they're very suspicious already, okay, than that. But I say they've woken up into a sub-reality. Think of the Matrix and think of Neo as he you know, lifts open his container well, just think if he lifts up that container just into another sub-container that's a little bit large in that, he didn't even come out yet. And that's kind of what's happened here. You're in a secondary container, a secondary reality, where you're still not getting all the facts, right? So that's very, we'll go over this next time. I'm, I'm running out of time here, six minutes left. But I promise next time I will go into detail on the my classification. I don't need to be derogatory or rude by calling the herd or sheep or sheeple or whatever you want, but... I have to give them some kind of name and, and, and classify so you can better understand the protocols of the wise men of Zion pertaining to media control specifically go hand in hand with this little concept of mine of these the four herds or the three herds, whatever you want to call them. And once you understand these different classifications and you understand their game plan, the protocols, particularly number 12 relating to control of the press, it all really falls into place. And you understand that on a small scale, sometimes my articles like Plume Gate can be published. They will, you know, to a small scale, allow them to be published to study and see the reaction. You know, they control 99%. To let 1% publish an article through is really just a test to research things for all intents and purposes. Nothing will come of it. There will be no giant revolution or no new different third-party president elect or anything special. And they know this. So for all intents and purposes, those following the alternative media that are falling for this Operation Mockingbird style infiltration, and that's basically the scenario. They're being fooled again, and they're not given all the information. There's gatekeeping, there's damage mitigation. There's also memes and paradigms being projected on the public at large. For instance, real quick, if you look amongst a lot of these larger groups, they're promoting a lot of police brutality videos. And I don't defend police brutality. It's a horrible thing. But if you look, and for a long time I asked myself, why so much? Why so much? You know, they had me all angry at the cops and everything. I, and I was developing the mentality, us versus them with the police. That's simply not the case. And my brother works at the jail outside of Tampa Hills County. And the police there, more often than not, are good people like you or I. There's always bad cases. And maybe this is growing because they're coming back from the military and getting jobs, and they really should just have their benefits and stuff paid for and they should be retiring and rehabbing from, you know, you've been in war in Iraq, you better give me 10 to 15 years to retire from that from it. So basically, let me sum up here, i got four minutes left. It was never carried like it should have been in Gate and the alternative media. As a result of that, Obama's sailing right on through to the election. We've got three weeks. We're almost going to be there. 
and he's not going to pay the consequences like he should have. So when I make the statement, some think it's outrageous, some think it's brash, that's the elements for the United States to be. In fact, most of them have actually protected Obama. Whilst harping on him about little things, I don't doubt that. And I don't doubt a lot of fact-checkable, although I will prove to you that there's a lot of media malpractice going on. Make no mistake, that I can prove beyond a doubt. I can prove greed and media malpractice hands down. And I can make a very excellent case, like a civil case, the fact that these are all controlled outlets and probably CIA, just like the uh, um, operation, original Operation Mockingbird, and maybe FBI like the Cointelpro. I've been looking into that recently, and I found some declassified documents uh, from Operation Hoodwink. Like I explained that last night, how the FBI is trying to manipulate two different factions into some kind of you know violent altercation between the two. So there's a lot of manipulation going on, and and you have to understand, like I say, within the alternative media, that manipulation must be of a much more sublime level. It can't be like David Icke says with the vaccines. If the guy getting ahead of you falls over dead, you're going to walk away and you want nothing to do with it. So it has to be very sublime. Where you know Alex Jones will say, "Fast and furious, rah rah rah," and he'll harp on that, Obama, Obama, Obama. But he really didn't go into the 40 documents. He didn't expose them like he should have for what happened on his watch. Because with the bottle, we got one of three things, folks. One of three things. Either he's a buffoon, totally oblivious, don't know what he's totally incompetent. Number two, he's conspired and lied to by all these agents. Everyone's lying to him and conspiring to him. Or number three, he's totally on it, knew the plume, went to South America right when the worst of the plume hit. That was no coincidence. And that's why I'm so angry with alternative media, right? They fact is, no one really knows about this. It has not come to the forefront in the alternative media, certainly not the mainstream, and very few elements within the independent media are even talking about the freedom of information documents that prove a massive multi-agency conspiracy to hide the plume. Now, I didn't get to the uh, fatality figures tonight, but I tell you, I've got a couple of good files on this, and I've got the Sherman Mangano study, and I will read the intro to that to you tomorrow night, which is clear and concise in just a couple paragraphs so you can understand their methodology, how they arrive at this conclusion that these people have died. And indeed, there has been what they call the Fukushima footprint, and you can find this on any news informal where they talk about it, that they have determined the radiation we're suffering is from Fukushima. It has a particular finger they can guarantee that's where it's from. So they can eliminate the Cold War era bomb testing. They can eliminate the effects of Chernobyl or Three Mile Island, or the Simi Valley, or there's a lot of others when you really dig into it. So that's going to sum up for tonight. I made it for the full 30 minutes. I had a pretty raging headache to begin with. When I start talking about government corruption and conspiracy and lies and deceit, I get pretty fed up and my headache goes away. So, folks, we'll be back on tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. Patrick Penry, I appreciate you joining the broadcast. And uh, please get the word out about this. And let how do you know? Uh, cue the men to the NRC for your documents and the conspiracy to come. Thank you and have a good night.